Hello again, this is Martin, just Martin, and I'm here inside the sanctuary of St. Paul Evangelical Lutheran Church, which, because of COVID, is a tiny bit emptier than it usually is. This time last year, we'd have somewhere between 30 and 50 people worshiping God and communing afterwards in the parish hall, but that was a year ago. Now, things are a tiny bit different, and if you thought they were going to be this way last year, my congratulations on your clairvoyance. But you think about what happened in this Sunday's epistle lesson. Peter, Simon Peter, the one who kept putting his foot in his mouth, but the one who confessed that Jesus was in fact the son of the living God, had a message for us as well as for the church of his time. When he said, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Fact of the matter is, most of us human beings tend to feel, how can I put it? Privileged. We actually, whether we admit it or not, act like Karens, those people who think that they don't have to wear a mask, don't have to use sanitizer, don't have to do social distancing, don't have to listen to people who are trying to keep us alive. There have been things like this in history. This just happens to be an extreme example. So when Peter says, don't be surprised, he says, this kind of thing happens to people all the time, especially if they call themselves Christians. Why? Because for 1900 years, people have been trying to shut Jesus up. Spoiler alert, it's not working. <laughs> and it won't, because Jesus Christ is, was, and will be Lord. I mean, look at what Peter is saying here. He says, rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ. He is glorified, but his church, whom he is connected to, still suffers. Right now, even as you and I are talking, one-way conversation, there are people being oppressed because they believe in Jesus. In some countries, they have to put the picture of the leader higher than or bigger than or more powerful than, than Jesus Christ. In some churches and in some places, mentioning the name of Jesus Christ in the wrong way could get you seriously hurt or maybe even killed. And Peter says, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. Now some people would think, that's crazy. But you know what? If you were with these believers who are being oppressed, they are actually rejoicing. They are actually full of joy. Because they know that Jesus Christ is real. And they know that the government, that their enemies, that the politicians can't stop that. That's not surprising, because 1900 years ago, they tried to do the same thing. The Roman Empire, in various places and in different locations, tried to suppress the gospel of Jesus Christ. Spoiler alert number two, it didn't work, and it won't. If I'm sounding like a broken record, I'm sorry, but the truth is the truth, regardless of how many times it's said, and regardless of how many times it's ignored. And Peter understands this. In fact, he goes one step further in verse 16. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Those brothers and sisters that are being persecuted now read this verse and they understand it. They are rejoicing in Jesus. They're saying, thank you, Lord, for the privilege. The privilege? Yes, the privilege of bearing shame for his name. It may be because they call you homophobic. It may be because they call you old-fashioned. It may be because they literally call you crazy. Don't get me wrong. You're not allowed to be homophobic or crazy or anything like that. 
But if they blame the name of Jesus for you, and if you are suffering in the name of Jesus, and not because you're rude or a meddler, I like the way that Peter said it, not even a meddler, because there are some people who believe in getting into business that they should not be in. The scary thing is that people, some Christians I know, and I have to admit that sometimes even myself, are afraid of being known as a Christian. Are you a Christian? Remember, this is the same Peter who, when he was asked three times, do you know him, said no. But he woke up. He realized being connected to Jesus Christ is the most important thing that can happen to you. It is the most important thing in terms of being born a Christian, and it is the most important thing in living a Christian. That's a very key point. We have to think about that in this new year. I want everyone to know that I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I want everyone to know that I am serious about being a believer in Jesus Christ. And if you don't like it, fine. That's your privilege. God bless you anyway. And if you do like it, please let me know. I want to hear encouragement from my brothers and sisters, regardless of whatever. Thank you. Jeffrey gave me a very big thank you. And by the way, I have to say that I am grateful not only to Jeffrey Aflalo, but to the rest of our technical team who have given you the ability to hear the gospel for several years. Guys and gals, thank you. I stop and say that right now and I'll continue to do so because as we both know, ingratitude is an ugly and filthy thing. And God does not go with that and Peter does not go with that, and I do not go with that. Just saying. I'm just Martin. That's all. Verse 19 says it nicely. Those who suffer according to God's will, that's doing God's will in the right way, in the right form, should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Make me a promise, will you? Make yourself a promise. You are going to do good. You are going to commit yourself to create to Creator God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You're going to commit yourself to the power of the Holy Spirit, and you are going to listen to what the Word of God says. Now, tomorrow, the next day. Because the world needs to know what we know. The Gospel is real. And it lives. And we live in it. Praise His name. Thank you for listening and for paying attention to this. I want to thank those who have given me personal encouragement as we take on this new ministry. And I want to remind you about www.stpaullutheranla.org. Use that in order to get more information about our ministry about our YouTube ministry and Instagram and other ministries. And if you're so inclined to help us, supporting this ministry means supporting the gospel of Jesus Christ going into the internet universe, which is, after all, part of what Jesus said. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. That includes the internet. That includes YouTube. That includes Instagram and anywhere else. Thank you, God bless you, and may his grace fill you with every good thing. Amen.